Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, I just want to talk about solids of revolution revolving around horizontal lines below the x-axis. So let's take a look at this problem. Find the volume of the solid that results from rotating the area between y is equal to x to the power of one third. That's going to be the pink function and y is equal to x squared. That's the blue function around the line y is equal to negative 1, which is the yellow line. So imagine you take the area between these two curves and you rotate it around the yellow line. Well, what kind of object are you going to get? So you're going to get something like this. And to find the volume of this three-dimensional solid, all you have to do is take the volume of the outside function, which is the pink function, that's the outside function, and you minus the volume of the inner function, which is the blue function. So let me repeat that. V solid, which is the volume of this solid, is equal to the volume of the outside function minus the volume of the inner function. So what is the formula for the volume of solids? Well, it's basically the integral from A to B. Well, in this case, we just want to find the volume from 0 to 1. So that's going to be 0 to 1 of A of x dx, where A of x is the area of the circular cross-section. For the volume of the inner function, it is the same thing. So 0 to 1 of a of x dx. So a of x is a circle, so that's going to be pi times the radius to the power of 2, which is equal to pi times... Now, if you take a look at the diagram, you know that the radius is the distance from this line to the top, right? And so... You know that the distance from here to here is x to the power of one third, and the distance from here to here is going to be one. And so the radius will simply be x to the power of one third plus one. Now, there is one formula that will always give you the radius. Let me show you what it is. So the radius can also be found using this formula. You take the top y, which is x to the power of one third, and you minus the bottom y, which is negative one. So that's going to give you x to the power of one third plus one, which is the same as the one we found. So you can either find the radius by looking at the diagram or just use this formula. So the next step is just putting this back into our integral right there. The area of the blue circular cross-section is the same. It's just pi times the radius squared because it's a circle. So that's equal to pi times. Now, the radius is from here to here. So we take this distance. Well, that's going to be x to the power of 2 plus this distance right there, which is just 1, to the power of 2. So the other way to find the radius, if you prefer the second way, is just to take the top y. So take the top y, and we know that y is the same as x to the power of 2. And you minus the bottom y. So minus negative 1. Well, that's also going to give you x squared plus 1, which is the same as the radius we just found. So you can use either way, whichever you prefer. And let's go ahead and put this back into our integral. We are ready to find the volume of this solid. So since both integrals have the same boundaries, we can just match them together into one integral, and that's going to simplify a lot of things. So this is the same as the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x to the power of 1 third plus 1 to the power of 2 minus pi times 
x to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2 dx. So the next step is we can just factor out the pi. That's going to be the same as the integral from 0 to 1 times pi times x to the power of 1 third plus 1 to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2 dx. Since pi is just a number, we can bring it outside of the integral. So that's going to be the same as pi times the integral from 0 to 1 times x to the power of 1 third plus 1 to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2 dx. Now what we need to do is we need to solve this right here. So first of all, what is x to the power of 1 third plus 1 to the power of 2? Well, that's just the same as x to the power of 1 third times itself. So remember, you have to use a formula. You got to multiply this, multiply that, plus this, multiply by that. That's going to be the same as x to the power of 1 third to the power of 2, because we multiply these together, plus x to the power of 1 third times 1, that's x to the power of 1 third, plus 1 times x to the power of 1 third, and finally plus 1. So this is going to be the same as x to the power of 2 thirds, plus 2 times x to the power of 1 third, plus 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. For this one right here, that's going to be x to the power of 2 plus 1 times x to the power of 2 plus 1 again. And so x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 2, that's going to be x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 2 times 1, that's x to the power of 2. So 1 times x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 2, and 1 times 1 is just 1. So again, this is the same as x to the power of 4 plus 2x to the power of 2 plus 1. So let's put it back into here. So let's rewrite this. This is going to be the same as pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of 2 thirds plus 2 times x to the power of 1 third plus 1 minus x to the power of 4 minus 2 times x to the power of 2 and minus 1 dx. Of course, the 1s are going to cancel out because 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of 2 thirds plus x to the power of 1 third minus x to the power of 4 minus 2 times x to the power of 2 dx. And so let's integrate it. This is going to be pi times the integral, or sorry, the antiderivative of x to the power of 2 thirds. This is going to be x to the power of 5 thirds, and you have to divide by this exponent. So divide by 5 over 3. Well, that's the same as 3 over 5 right there. The antiderivative of 2 times x to the power of 1 third, so let's do that. This is going to be 4 over 3, and you have to divide by the exponent, so divide by 4 over 3. Well, that's the same as 2 times 3 over 4 times x to the power of 4 over 3. So this right there, that's going to simplify into 3 over 2. So let's rewrite that. The antiderivative of x to the power of 4 is simply 1 over 5 times x to the power of 5. And finally, the antiderivative of negative 2 times x to the power of 2 is 2 over 3 times x to the power of 3. And the boundary goes from 1 to 0, so that's going to be 1. This is going to be 0. It's time 
to solve for this. It's just a matter of solving. So pi times 3 to the power of 5 times 1 to the power of 5 over 3. So we're basically substituting the top number, the upper limit. So this is plus 3 over 2 times 1 to the power of 4 over 3 minus 1 over 5 times 1 to the power of 5 minus 2 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 and time to minus the lower bound. So that's what we have to do. So we're just going to minus the lower bound. The lower bound is just going to be 3 over 5 times 0 to the power of 3 over 5 plus 3 over 2 times 0 to the power of 4 over 3 minus 1 over 5 times 0 to the power of 5 and minus 2 over 3 times 0 to the power of 3. Well, but if you look at this, you know that's going to be 0 right away because that's going to be 0 and 0 times any number is 0. So the same for all of this. So this right there, that's going to be 0. We are so close to finishing. So again, this is just pi times, this is going to be 1 times 3 over 5, which is just 3 over 5, plus this is going to be 3 over 2. This is going to be negative 1 over 5 minus 2 over 3. So it's just a matter of solving fractions. The common denominator is going to be 30. So pi times, this is 30. That's going to be 18 plus this is going to be 30, and that's going to be 45, minus that's going to be 30, this is going to be 6, and minus 20 over 30. And finally, 18 plus 45 minus 6 minus 20 is just going to give you 37. So this is pi times 37 over 30, and the final answer is just going to be 37 over 30 times pi. So this right there, so this right here, represents the volume of our three-dimensional solid.